So I've tried to put my concentrator as far away as I can because it's really noisy. I'm struggling in particular today, so I'm actually going to wear this because I'm getting really breathless. And after I do these videos, I'm in hell of a state. So I'm like, right, how about you don't get in hell of a state at the end and you help yourself during acceptance. Anyway, into the video. <laughs> So this is going to be a quick fire q a i get asked a lot of the same questions on all of my social medias i thought i would do a separate short video to answer these questions as short as i can without making it 15 minutes per question and they are just four fairly common questions i get asked so we'll go with the first question which is the burning question i always get are you on Caftrio? why haven't you been off of Caftrio? etc etc i have been on it and i can be on it if I felt I could. However, as I've explained in another video, I had neurological, psychological and very debilitating side effects of Caftrio to the point I couldn't live in my own brain anymore. My theory is that my body just doesn't tolerate Caftrio because it passes the blood brain barrier. And a lot of medications do for me. Any that do pass the blood brain barrier will have a negative effect on me. I am that one in a thousand person. I tried my best and I altered doses as much as I could over the course of 18 months, including paediatric doses, and it just wasn't getting me anywhere. And unfortunately, I am now just waiting for the next miracle medication to come out. And it's great that it works for so many. However, I am not one of those people who can be on it right now. Another question. It's not necessarily a question, this one. This is more of a almost kind of accusation or assumption so it is but google said that you'll live to 50 or 80 between 50 or 80 now for a start i'm not saying that google is wrong because i google a lot of things and i get a lot of knowledge from google however this particular question is so broad spectrum with cystic fibrosis there are classes there are different gene types and those gene types mixed together with other gene types fit into different classifications of cystic fibrosis. It all depends on how your body copes, what parts of your body are affected and what has happened to you through your life to damage your body further. So things like TB, Burkholderia cause problems for me. I have pseudomonas that I can't get rid of. That's a problem for me. That's kind of why we're at where we're at alongside the gastroparesis is damage already done. And what I do need to reiterate to people is that Caftrio does not reverse damage. It will just stop damage from getting any worse. Different things happen to people with cystic fibrosis and they can catch bugs that are absolutely detrimental. But the way the question gets asked to me is, oh, but I just Googled it and it says you could live between 50 and 80 and you're saying that you're dying at 30. What well, you know, that's, that can't be true. It can be true, unfortunately, I wish it wasn't. And I, we are trying our best to turn that around. We are trying to change that prognosis, that outlook. Um, but it's hard. There's a lot of things going on in my body, mainly the gastroparesis, that is just kicking my ass and I don't have the strength. I don't have the nutrition. I don't have the body mass index anymore. I don't have it in me to fight off my infections the way I used to. And that is a very classic way that CFs decline. Things get harder, the body gets weaker, and there is no telling at what age that's going to happen. And unfortunately, I know 12 CFs in my own county from the 90s that have passed away up until last year. And they were all pre-30, which is also devastating. In the 90s, I believe one of them was 11 years old. Those statistics are often created when things like Caftrio come out. There were even new statistics when Polmazine, Dornay's Alpha, the nebulizer came out because that was helping people so much. That was revolutionary. That was the Caftrio of its day. So they are looking at children being born now with cystic fibrosis will have that prognosis. They are not talking about people in the 90s, the 80s being born, having that prognosis now because for us, the damage is done. A lot of us will have caught tuberculosis, a lot of us would have had burkholderia, a lot of us will have pseudomonas, staph aureus. Once they get hold of you and create the damage, you know, they are very serious infections. On to the next one. Is transplant an option? This is something I have also mentioned in another video and done a big discussion about it. 
it's not that it's not an option but it isn't an option it's i'm not sick enough but i'm too sick the gastroparesis could be what stops me having a transplant so i'm on the assessment phase and i'm waiting to hear back from harefield however um because of gastroparesis never being cured so it will never go away um and my flares don't go away either i'm always in a gastroparesis flare that's not proving that i can sustain my life after transplant because that's going to be the same if not worse as transplant can actually cause gastroparesis and i already have it if it was going to make it worse then they would see me as a risk factor and that they would waste lungs on me because something might happen post-transplant and I won't be able to get my strength up and living on TPN for me is not an option I know that's not the case for everyone there are so many mitigating factors that mean I can't have one but we're also not saying I can't because no one has officially said I can't yet so we're just waiting was my pregnancy okay yes um I delivered at 36 weeks and up until that point I was okay I had antibiotics throughout and then I had IV antibiotics in those last few weeks because I had started culturing pseudomonas which is not great and I haven't really not grown it since um <clears throat> that was all that made my pregnancy difficult and that was less than a month of difficulty and it was totally worth it and on the day of giving birth a day of no CF that was me having my baby it was wonderful when they say that the pain goes away when you hold your baby could not be more true for me personally i don't know if i'm just one of the lucky ones so i did kind of forget to mention that i did have gestational diabetes during my pregnancy but that also didn't really cause a problem until the end few weeks when i was on slide and scale during that chest infection exacerbation and i was induced it was not a natural full-term labor obviously and if I'm honest, there were a few things that worried the midwives and doctors. However, I flew through them anyway and I was stubborn as always and I did what I felt was best for me and it all worked out. Yeah, those are some quick fire answers to those questions. If you have any more questions for me, drop them in the comments below and I'll do more videos like this. Just five minute quick fire questions. I will see you in the next one. Bye.